and gentlemen, boys and shut up, Mitch. Welcome to episode 203 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. It's been five weeks since I've missed an episode. I hope you are also up to the same streak. We're counting. We're keeping ourselves accountable. All right. I'm going to be here every week. So are you. Okay. Five weeks since I've missed an episode. It's all fucking happening, all right? Now, uh, can we just start this episode off with one? First of all, right, Lewis Spears U2s drops July 31st. You better be fucking ready. These are going to go nuts. And also, it's time to acknowledge, right? I'm going to get into the figure later. It is time to acknowledge how consistently fucking correct I have been about this coronavirus shit. I think that I might... Uh, be I, I can either tell the the future or I'm just or I just know where to look. Okay, dude, I called this shit. You want to go back to like fucking? I think it was January this year. I did the official podcast. They were talking about coronavirus. I'm pretty sure every single one of them, except for critical, I think most of them were all saying, "Ah, eh, it's just the flu. It's not going to be that big of a deal." I said, "I don't know, man. I think this is pretty serious." Bam, what happens? Global pandemic. You know, Lewis Wright once again, okay? Next up, I'm thinking, dude, I reckon we're going into quarantine. Been very vocal about this. Bam, we're in quarantine. I was correct about that shit, right? Next thing, you know what I'm saying? I think we need to wear masks. Everyone's going, oh, no, we don't need masks. They don't work. We don't recommend it. Bam. Guess what Victoria just recommended? Fucking masks. Donald Trump is now wearing a fucking mask. Uh, what else? Then, right, you all remember when Victoria got let out of lockdown, I said, stay the fuck home until we are sure whether or not there's going to be a second wave. Because I think there's going to be a second wave. What the fuck happened? Second wave. Then I said, I think we're going to get locked down again. Bam, we're locked down again. I think I know what's going to happen before everybody else. I haven't been wrong yet. It hasn't happened. And guys, there is nothing that I can do that is useful with this information, but I just wanted to rub it in everyone's face that I was correct. Okay? And 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 that's I don't need a well done. Actually, you know what? I do need a well done. It's pretty crazy, man. Hope you guys are doing all right in that lockdown. Uh, if you are in Victoria or if you're in some some other place in the nation or the world that is locked down, I hope it's uh, treating you well. I think I've I think I've gone insane. I think uh, I think that uh, <laughs> an unfortunate byproduct of me being absolutely correct about this coronavirus shit is. Uh, do you guys remember when I locked myself down before lockdown because I didn't want to get this shit, and then I didn't leave my house when lockdown was lifted because I thought there was going to be a second wave, and now there's been uh, another lockdown. Guys, I've been locked down since before the first lockdown. I think I've gone insane. We got locked down again. I'm like, all right, well, that's it. I have nothing else to do. Time to start up Skyrim. I've started Skyrim, guys. I've lost it. It's over. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, but we're only getting more cases because we're testing more often. I don't know about the States, but in Victoria, that is true. However, the, the percentage of positive cases is also much higher than it used to be. So it's definitely spreading. So I'm wearing a mask. If you don't wear a mask... Uh, you're just a cunt who doesn't wear a seatbelt, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I think you should wear a mask. You can get them online now, by the way. I just bought uh, two for mum and uh, my grandma. Who is it? Sorry about that. Little fucking interruption. Okay, where was I? I am the smartest man alive when it comes to only this. Okay, so always listen and do exactly as I say, because I have a PhD in fuck all, but I'm very paranoid. And uh, that's really who we should be listening to, you know? Dude, I've had the, the fucking the worst week. Jazz just interrupted with a problem with shipping. Dude, can we just collectively say fuck every company that ships anything? You know, the, the company that ships my merch to you, fuck them. The company that ships things that I buy to me, fuck them. The companies that ship uh, cabinets that are supposedly full of children, fuck them, okay? Look, I'm annoyed, guys. I ordered uh, a fucking $10,000 cabinet from Wayfair, okay? 
I needed the $10,000 cabinet because obviously I've, I'm doing so well, all right? I'm recording from a studio that many people seem to think is a garage. And look, did it used to hold cars? Yes. Am I going to ignore that? Absolutely. And that's why I'm calling it a studio. But because I'm doing so well, I'm absolutely fucking killing it, guys, okay? Uh, I needed a $10,000 cabinet. So I bought one from Wayfair, all right? It was a very suspiciously specific price. It looked to me like some coordinates of some stolen children and had the name of a of a missing child on it even had fucking uh, on the measurements instead of the measurements of the cabinet which you would think to be quite rectangular it just listed like a, a height weight and gender of a, of a human being which I didn't really understand but whatever I bought the best cabinet I could find on Wayfair for ten thousand three hundred and sixty nine point seven three four five dollars right I've been waiting for it to arrive finally the Wayfair truck pulls up pulls out this fucking cabinet. I open it up, there's no drawers inside, there's just children. I ordered a cabinet. I didn't want a fucking child. Now I gotta feed the bitch. She keeps going, where's my mum? I wanna go home. Shut up, bitch. I wanted a cabinet, not a child. Now I'm on the phone to Wayfair, trying to get a refund, trying to find this kid's mum, give him back. They keep telling me they never sold me the cabinet. They kept telling me that I said, dude, you charged me $10,000 for a cabinet. And I got a child. Where's my cabinet? They said the cabinets were never on the website. What's going on? I got on the phone to their customer service line. They put me directly through to some woman named Ghislaine who's living on some island. I said, aren't you supposed to be in prison? She said, what are you talking about? How did you get my number and hung up on me? What is going on? I don't need this kid. I need a fucking cabinet to store my files. Ridiculous, man. What do you think about that conspiracy, that Wayfair shit? You guys seen that one? That's spooky, huh? My girlfriend showed me that. My girl showed me. She goes, I was playing Skyrim, trying to ignore the world. That's what I want. When I turn on Skyrim, I'm literally going to another world. I don't want to hear anything about this one. Oh, everyone's grandma is dead and all the famous people fuck kids. I don't want to hear it. I want to learn about fucking dragons. Because uh, let's be real, a dragon massacring uh, a village full of like peasants that are going to die at 40 is at this point a happy story that I hear about, you know? Like I hear some fucking prison guard going, oh, I want to be an adventurer. And then I took an arrow to the knee. As terrible as that is, it's a lot better than the news that I'm seeing every fucking day now. I'm trying to get away from this shit. So I'm playing Skyrim. I'm four hours in, bro. I'm a dark elf. I got the bow. I got two daggers. I'm doing a little bit of necromancy, but not too much. I'm living my fucking life. And then my girl barges down the door and she goes, she looks at me really concerned, really sad, really stressed. And she goes, have you checked Twitter? And honest to God, my first thought was, am I fucking canceled? (laughs) What have they done? Did they find anything that I've said on any of these episodes? Am I over? Am I done? Is my girlfriend getting hate because of some fucking dumb, ignorant thing I said as a joke on this podcast? Is that, that was my first thought. That's why the world's fucked. My girlfriend comes to me. She looks really stressed and sad. She goes, have you checked Twitter? And I think it's about me. What kind of selfish cunt am I? No. It's apparently about some big shipping business trafficking children. I've been looking into it, man. I don't know. At first I saw it and I was like, ah, it's bullshit, crazy QAnon shit. But then, I don't know, dude. Starts to make a lot of sense. So... If you if you're uh, if you're uninitiated, if you haven't taken the red pill, I'm going to explain it badly for you. Um, so uh, Wayfair is like a similar business to Amazon, where they started off selling their own furniture and then they just built this big system where any cunt can put their product on their website, but it looks like it's being sold by them, right? And uh, people started to notice that Wayfair was selling like um, metal steel cabinets that are just regular cabinets. Like I bought one from Bunnings the other day for like, um, to store on my camera gear. It's got a little lock on it. It's nice metal for like $250. Uh, so like, that's like the max that, that you would really want to pay for that. It's a good cabinet. It stores my cameras, 250 bucks, right? Bunch of shelves, tall as me, about two meters tall. Now Wayfair was selling like what is essentially the same cabinet for like, 
over ten thousand dollars, but there were really weird specific amounts. It was like ten point three point, and then the cents went on for like decimals and decimals, and people started to work out, and all of the cabinets were 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 named like after a, a person's name, and then all these cunts, all these Twitter detectives. Uh, and also, apparently, Gen Z on TikTok have been absolutely fucking red pilled. I saw this shit on TikTok before I saw it on Twitter, right? Uh, all these cabinets are like named after they got first names of ch- of children who are missing children, and then the the decimal amounts, like the price of the cabinet, it turns out to be like coordinates of where they were supposedly taken from or missing, right? Um. So, and Jazz, I haven't seen this on Twitter, but Jazz found this out. A lot of the cabinets, when they were up, and it's not just cabinets, it's also pillows, this, that, right? A lot of these cabinets, pillows with names of children's and supposedly coordinates in their descriptions, um, you couldn't buy them at all unless you had a code to purchase them. So people are starting to think that, uh, dude, is this fucking child trafficking? Wayfair have a contract with uh, ICE, all those immigration detention centres, who somehow lost 2,000 children. How the fuck do you lose a child? That's not a jailbreak. That's like you lost 2,000 kids. Where the fuck did they go? Right? Now, here's what I think. At first I was like, Nah, this is crazy bullshit. This is literally insane stuff. But then Jazz got sucked into it. And she started showing me stuff. And I was like, okay, look, let's be real. My girlfriend's smarter than me. If she's sucked in, I'm all in. If she's sucked in, I'm calling the police about it. <laughs> um, what got me, right, was when Wayfair came out, because I was trending on Twitter and all that shit. Wayfair comes out and they go, uh, obviously, this is not true. Uh, and it's not a glitch. All of these cabinets are correctly priced. That's just bullshit. No cunts paying ten thousand dollars for a steel cabinet. I have one. They don't. They don't cost ten. Like you might ten thousand dollars maybe for the best gun safe in the world. Something that you're going to keep fucking gold in, right? So you, that's just not true. Um. Also, there were pillows that were $8,000 that have all now mysteriously disappeared. So here's what I think. I think that Wayfair actually had nothing to do with it. I think Wayfair was is, is like Amazon. So if you don't know with Amazon, Amazon isn't selling all of that shit. They're just putting it on their website and taking a cut. And any, any cunt can upload their products. I was looking at putting my own merch on Amazon. Uh, I, you literally just fill out a form and then everything on my website goes on Amazon. They take a little cut. It's that easy. I didn't do it because you had to pay some monthly fee and uh, I, I'm i sick to death of monthly fees, okay? I got Netflix. I got Amazon Prime. I, I just canceled Disney Plus. Get the fuck out of here with your monthly fees, right? Um, so I'm done with that. Uh, but anyone can do that. So, so to me, it just looked like maybe there actually was some truth to it and child traffickers were selling that shit. I mean, the child trafficking shit is real. I don't think all these celebrity. I don't think there's some underground celebrity cabal, right? If I'm a, if I, if let's be real, if I'm a serial child trafficker, I don't want celebrities showing up. Is that? Do you think that's the best way to do business? No, you just go for rich pedos. You don't go for famous cunts. Oh yeah, uh, Angelina Jolie, paparazzi follow you fucking everywhere. No worries. Meet me at this warehouse. That's that's to me. Seems like uh, bad business, um, and I should know. You know, I I just I just bought a fucking child from Wayfair. Now I got to sell it. I got to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm obviously joking. Um, I think that it that it might have been some third party seller that was actually doing that shit. Because it's because it's like all of it was weird until Jazz told me you needed a, a secret code to even buy this shit in the first place. To me, it just seemed like money laundering. Because you know the, the child trafficking shit is alive and well. It's happening. We know in like second world countries massively, uh, and the internet is a thing. These criminals aren't dumb. They would be using it to do that shit. It's not that crazy to think that some child sex traffickings have like exploited Amazon or some lesser known selling platform to clean the money. It's like, I didn't sell a kid. I sold a cabinet for $10,000. 
you know. And to me, that would be like obviously you don't you buy you don't buy a cabinet and then a child rocks up. That wouldn't happen. You'd buy the cabinet. You would actually get the cabinet, uh, and then that child thing would happen somewhere else. It's just a way to clean the money, you know. Drug dealers have been doing that shit for ages. It's like he didn't buy cocaine for me. He spent six million dollars on a chair. Nothing, there's literally nothing illegal about that. It's like, yeah, if 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 the FBI goes, where'd you get that six million dollars from? And then you show him the receipt for a chair and the tracking number of a chair that you sent the other guy, and the other guy goes, yeah, I didn't buy coke. I spent six million dollars on a chair. That's literally the the high art market. They pay fucking six million dollars for art, and they're actually buying something else. It's to avoid paying tax or this or that. Um, so that's what I think. Probably could have happened. Uh, or I've been completely sucked in by cunts on TikTok. Who knows? Um, guys, I wanted to say that uh, uh, thank you very much. It's winter. It's very cold. All of my hoodies are pretty much gone. There's like 30-something hoodies gone. Some of the sizes are sold out. Loosespears.com for your death threats don't scare me hoodies. They're super comfortable, super warm. If you want to be warm in winter, that's the way to go. Uh, Loosespears.com, they are going fast. And, man, thanks so much to all the people that have been grabbing merch as well. It's been really, really cool. Uh, with this coronavirus shit, here's what I think is going to happen, actually. So... And I haven't been wrong yet. Could be wrong today, but here's what I think is going to happen. I don't think that live shows, and I'm talking like no restrictions. So like some live shows when restrictions were lifted a little bit were like 15 person shows. Guys, I am not doing a show for 15 people that have to spread out around the room. It's going to suck for me. It's going to suck for you. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to charge money for me to do stand up via Zoom, okay? Don't buy tickets to those fucking Zoom comedy call calls. They are not good. You won't enjoy it. It's bad. Could you imagine performing comedy via Zoom, Skype, doing stand up on a, on fucking Omegle? I would rather. That would be the worst shit ever. Don't buy tickets to that. It's not real stand up, okay? It's bad. Um so what I think is going to happen is I reckon it's going to go like uh, it's going to go. So these six, we've been locked down for six more weeks in Victoria. Uh, Sydney's going to get locked down next because Sydney is just as bad as us. They just don't give a fuck because they're like super liberal. The government, uh, the liberal, and um, I think that. I, initially, before this second lockdown, I was thinking that shows might come back in March. That shit's not going to happen. No way. There's going to be no comedy festival in March next year. I honestly think it's not going to be back until June, July, like when we have a vaccine, actually, for like, I'm talking properly unrestricted shows, no population limit, no seating limits, all that. I reckon it's actually not going to be until fucking June, July, because we've got six weeks. That's going to take us to, let me get on my calendar here. So six weeks from now is going to take us to like basically September. And then there's going to be minimum that, and then, and then if we lower the restrictions, that's a big if as well. If we lower restrictions, we're going to be on stage two for September and October, right? Maybe. And then I think we're going to stay at stage two if it doesn't get better, which as we all proved when, as soon as we hit stage two, everyone stops social distancing and, and all of the cases spiked. So it's either going to go back up to stage three in November, December, or stay stage two, November, December. And then maybe, right, it'll be stage one, January, February. And then best fucking case scenario, shows will be legal in March. More likely what I think is going to happen is we'll go back up to stage two somewhere between November, December, January, February for a few months. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, maybe we'll go back to stage one, but stage one, you still can't do live shows properly. And for me, as an entertainer, keep, cunts keep asking me, oh, when are you going to do live shows again? It's like, I don't know. Well, I think all of these entertainers that are booking in live shows are stupid. You're wasting your money. Don't book in a live show. Because imagine if I had, if I had booked in, you know, like, oh, stage two restrictions are around. I can do one of these small little shows. If I had a show right now, stage three came back, I got to refund you, but I don't get my money back. 
So I would be just fucked. I've already had to do it. I'm still paying off my Melbourne Comedy Festival debt. So I I really can't book in a show until there are no restrictions. Because if I book in a show when there are some restrictions and I bank on those restrictions being lifted, if I had done that, I would have already lost. I know fucking heaps of entertainers that just lost that gamble and they've lost a lot of fucking money. So really, for me at least, shows aren't going to be back until June, July. Because let's say restrictions are lifted by March, that's when I will start booking in my shows. I need, you know, four months to put them on sale, to promote them, to get the dates that I want, all that shit. So, uh, fuck, man, we're not going to be seeing each other in person for a long time. This shit's bad. Uh, but if you'd like to support what I'm doing, Patreon is the best way to do it, or grab my YouTube's figure July 31. Um, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to go hard with the online thing. You probably noticed it already. I think last month was... One of the best months I've had on YouTube for a very long time, uh, and that is literally just because I've been uploading twice a week, uh, and I'm going to continue that, going to keep that shit going. Um, I kind of fucked up last week because we had to go back into lockdown, so me and Keelan had to like work out what we're doing, but now I'm going to be uploading. He'll be downloading and sending it back to me. We'll be back on back on this roll again from now. Uh, Buy Monthly Bull came back. The, re- the reception to it was fucking awesome. Thanks so much to everyone who watched it, everybody who shared it. It was my best performing video that wasn't viral in the last few months, uh, and that's really cool. That series, is it's so clear that's what you guys enjoy the most. So that's what I'm going to get out to you guys and that's what I'm going to prioritize. I know I've said it many times, but hey, I said I wasn't going to miss an episode and we're fucking five weeks in. So, you know, got to believe me, cunt. Now I want to talk about, ah, fuck, sorry. I have absolutely fucked my neck. Dude, I don't think I fucked my neck. I, so I, I know that I have fucked my neck. Sorry. I was going to say what I was going to, I'm going to get to that, right? I've fucked up my neck again, dude. Start of the year, I went to gym, fucked my neck, went to physio, fixed it. This month, haven't been to gym, obviously, but some I just woke up and my neck was fucked. Guys, I'm too tall. I went to the physio, and you you know what he told me? I've been standing up too straight. That's the problem. The upper part of my back, too straight. My posture is too good. Here I was thinking, you know, I'm 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 six foot eight. I'm the biggest cunt on the fucking planet. I need to have a good posture. I put so much effort into sitting up straight, standing up straight, thinking like I'm. That's not what's going to take me down. I know that I'm big, so I'm going to have back problems more likely than a normal person. So I need to stand up straight, and that's not going to what. That's not going to be what takes me out. Physio fucking tells me I've been standing up too straight. What do you want, God? It's insane, man. Here's what I think. The problem is not you slouching. Everyone who has back problems, right? Everybody has back problems when they're like 80. I mean, with me, I'm fucking 26 and I've got terrible back problems, right? But I'm obviously an outlier, okay? Because I'm so tall. That's going to happen to me, yeah? You know, me being this tall is like you, uh, dear listener, being obese. Yeah, It's fine. You can be fat, but you're going to have these problems that you shouldn't have until you're 60, okay? Um, so get that shit sorted. You can fix that. You can hit. You can go for a run. I'm fucked. This is my body forever. You can fix it. I'm jealous, okay? Now, what I was saying was the problem isn't actually, and you know, this, this, this goes for obesity as well. You know, if you're obese, obviously you're going to have lots and lots of health problems when you're older, much sooner than a normal healthy person. And if you, you know, you're going to have back problems when you're 60, no matter who you are. Now, the the problem with the back problem thing, right, and all these diseases is the the answer is not to live a healthier life because that's what I tried. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I have a very good posture, but apparently it's too straight, right? The problem here is not how healthy we are. The problem is not how uh, well uh, you sit or how badly you sit, how overweight you are, how underweight you are. The problem is not that. The problem is, and, and I know the solution, the problem is we live too long. And the answer is everyone needs to die by 28. You know, that's what, that's the answer to all of the world's problems. By 28, you have to die. Uh, and and that that's what I've really considered is it doesn't matter how healthy I am. 
I'm a very healthy person. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I eat super healthy. I don't like sugar. Uh, I have a really good posture. I don't work a super manual hard labor job. And that's the fucking problem. That's why I have all these health issues. I'm staying alive too long. I wouldn't have to worry about this if I was a peasant living in the Middle Ages. I would be in the, my late stage of life. 12 was middle age back then. It, that's why they called it the Middle Age. Because everyone was in their middle age. By the time you hit 10, you were like 40. You were going to die soon. Cunts died in childbirth. You had to have seven kids just to make sure you ended up with one. And I think we need to go back to that. You know, that's why the world's so bad. You know, that's why everyone's so angry on Twitter, because we're going to live until we're 80. We have to entertain ourselves. We need to manufacture problems. That's why I always get yelled at over fucking jokes. Because we live too long. We need to die by 28. That's the solution to fix the world. 28 needs to be the maximum age. The maximum legal age is 28 years old because we, we live too long. That's why, you know, that's, I, I wouldn't have to worry about my neck problem. I've only got two years left. No worries. I can deal with this for two years. I don't want to deal with this shit for 60 more years. Let's be real. I'm going to live till I'm 100. As long as I don't get hit by a car or something, it is very likely that everyone in their 20s listening to this, unless you have a crazy lifestyle, you're probably going to live to 100. I, and I don't think that should be allowed. I think that at 28, you've got to go. That would fix the world. You know, I've got two more years left. I've got a bunch more videos, a few more podcasts in me. You know, that's like, uh, what's that? A hundred more podcasts? That's enough. Episode 305 of the podcast. I think we can all agree that's enough. You know? If you're listening to this, how many more times do you really want to go down to the cafe to get your morning coffee? Not that many times, you know, you're already, if you're like 25, you're already getting a little bit bored. Like, let's, let's really be real here. I think of food. I've had enough. I've eaten enough meals. I buy one. By the time I was 21, I'd eaten all of, all of the types of meals. And now I'm just going in circles. I got 60 more years of that. 80 more years. Fuck that, bro. We got to go by 28. That and, and that's what it is. That when when we were living in the middle ages, the the ever I reckon everyone was happier because everyone had a real problem to solve. Oh no, my sister died of sepsis. I don't give a fuck about what this comedian said on on Twitter. I have the black plague. And and that's when life was simpler. The good old days. I mean, I was never there. So I'm not exactly speaking from experience, but, you know, back in the day when, when you could get beheaded for stealing a loaf of bread, I think we need to go back to that. It's, it's just that simple, you know? No one gives a fuck about being offended when everyone has the bubonic plague, you know? Women weren't out there cancelling cunts on Twitter. They were cancelling their own cunt having nine kids in a row. And we have to go back to that. I'm sorry if this podcast is a little bit slow, but every time I yell or every time I speak fast or gesture, my neck canes. And that wouldn't be a problem if I was going to die in two years. Now, I'm not saying you need to kill yourself. I'm, I'm literally saying we need to bring back dangerous workplaces and we need to stop medicine generally, you know? When I back when I was uh, like eight years old, I almost died from asthma. Maybe that was supposed to happen. Maybe that should have you know gone down. Back when my brother was twelve, he almost died of eczema. The hospital saved him. Shouldn't have happened. You know, I think my parents would have been a lot happier if they had thirty children and they were gone by twenty eight. My mum still has a mortgage. That should that should be a crime. If she was gone by 28, she wouldn't have to deal with that. Neither would you. I, I think this is starting to make a lot of sense. Who would give a fuck about wearing masks or uh, quarantining or isolating if we didn't have to worry about old people at all? You know, if there was nobody over 30 in the world, do you really think we would care about any of this shit? I don't think so. Oh, I'm going back to uni as a mature age student. You wouldn't have to deal with those annoying cunts in your lectures, would you? You know? Uh, I have a question that's going to take 17 minutes for me to ask. Shut up, Grandpa! 
You know, old. if you were 30, you'd be old as fuck. That's what I think. And you know what? There would be no pedophiles. <laughs> because... Because if you if because if you fucked a fourteen year old, that's not a kid. That kid's basically forty. He's high. He's middle aged. <laughs> oh man! But that that's what I'm saying, guys. We need to die by twenty eight. I'm not saying we need to kill twenty eight year olds. I'm not saying you need to kill yourself. I'm just saying that we need to bring back uh, the general environment that we lived and worked in, where it was very very unlikely for you to make it past the age of twenty. You know, what happened to to all of those days where, uh, you know, in, in England, classic example, in the industrial age where you had kids working in uh, smiths melting down iron and they were nine years old. We need to go back to that. The times were simpler. People were happier. They died sooner. When people have real problems to solve, they don't complain as much and we need to go back to that. You know, you're listening to this, what, you're, you're fucking, you have to quarantine so the government is sending you almost $3,000 a month because you're studying social economics at university? You need to die in a few years and the world would be better. <laughs> Can you honestly look me in the face and say that you studying real estate is adding anything. Now, if you were if you were going to die, if you knew that you would probably die by 28, you wouldn't be studying to be a real estate manager, right? You would you just wouldn't be. You wouldn't be following those cunts on Instagram. There would be no Instagram. Now, I'm not now here's you might be thinking, "Oh, Lewis, you might you're trashing real estate agents. You're just a fucking comedian." Yeah? I I'm happy with that. I would be a jester. I would be a jester for the king and I would be executed at age 20, one year into the job because I would make fun of the princess. And and, and that's fine. I think that's, that's how I would have wanted to go. If we were living in the ideal world, I would be a jester who would either die of offending the princess or gangrene because there is, there's no fruit around me generally. That's how I want to go is by offending the princess or dying of gangrene. You know, like they have to amputate one of my feet and they fuck it up. And that's how I go. That would be a, like a lot better than me having to pay my energy bill because I use the heater a lot and it turned out to be much Do you ever think about that? Like, oh, fuck. I have to pay the energy bill? I would rather die of gangrene, a botched foot removal. I would rather that take me out than having to call up fucking Lumo and be like, why is my energy bill so expensive? And they go, oh, it's because you bought fucking $20 heaters from Kmart. And then you know what? Gangrene me. My neck hurts so much. You might be thinking this is a very fatalistic podcast that has a very bleak outlook. And that's because my neck hurts so much. And if I was dead by 25, that wouldn't have happened. If I died in a sawmill, you know, like it, like they, no one serviced it because there is no such thing as HR. Let's be real, HR is only around because cunts made it past 40. And we're like, ah, all of my friends died in the sawmill. Maybe I should set up an institution that fucking stops that from happening because I'm the only one of my peers that made it out. You know, that's the only reason we have that. And let's be honest, they're annoying. Oh, this hurts so much. Um, I'm going to move on to something a little bit brighter. I can't think of anything. I want to work in a sawmill and get taken out by gangrene. Um, oh yeah. I'm going to talk about my YouTube figure guys. Uh, dude, I'm so, st I'm so fucking stoked with this thing. This YouTube figure. It is, uh, I've been told it's the tallest of all of the YouTube's figure as I requested, uh, the design is fucking so cool, man. And they really, really nailed it. And as they should have, cause I spent so much time on this. I sent them so many fucking photos, uh, so many back and forths of this thing. Uh, and it is incredible, man. They fucking nailed it down to the zips on my jacket, the studs on my jacket, 
the fucking belts. Uh, literally everything about this thing is absolutely perfect. Um, you can't really see it on camera, but close up, they've nailed my rings. You can see the design on my rings. I sent them photos. And it is it is actually fucking crazy how well they have nailed everything, even the design on my necklace. It's fucking so perfect. It goes sale on sale July 31st. Now, this is American time, Eastern Standard Time. American Eastern Standard Time. What did they tell me? I asked them because a lot of you guys from Australia were asking me what fucking time is that. Now, let me have a look. I've got my fucking DMs up here with the U2s boys. Um, also, U2s are an Australian company. I didn't know that. That's fucking crazy. Okay, so July 31st at 3 p.m. US Standard Eastern Standard Time. So do your fucking Googling if you're in England or Australia. Uh, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time, July 31st. The American July 31st, which for, for us or wherever you are from may be different. So do your own fucking calendar math on that so you don't miss out. They are going to be very, very limited. I don't control the stock of this at all. I'm not even sure how many are being made, but all of them sell out. Uh, of all of the other creators. So fucking set your alarms and be ready for that. These will never be made again. They've told me, I asked them, they said, no, they don't do restocks. So they will never be made again. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, what are the roses on the feet? Uh, now that, if you guys don't know, this uh, YouTube's figure was actually supposed to come out with my comedy special. The second one, which was not recorded because of coronavirus, yee-haw. Uh, but the, uh, the below, there's the blue rose. Now, obviously, that represents death threats don't scare me. That's why the blue rose is all over uh, the hoodie and everything and the T-shirts the and the poster as well. And the blue rose represents uh, something that has never been done before that people are trying to create but never pulled it off. Because if you don't know, a blue rose has never been created. All these people are trying to genetically engineer a blue rose and scientists are trying to make it. And the idea is the first person to figure out the blue rose uh, is going to be incredibly successful because no one's ever done it before. And uh, Death Threats Don't Scare Me was my blue rose, uh, the thing that no one uh, in Australia has ever done before. And you guys helped me fucking do that. So it's very, very special for me. Now, the red rose... Uh, is supposed to represent my second comedy special, which has a title and a poster and an outfit and everything. Um, but uh, obviously that's not going to happen. But it will. It will. And uh, when you see, whenever that fucking thing can come out legally, uh, you guys are going to have the fucking red rose on the figure. And and yes, uh, the red roses were also put there to help it stand up on its own because I know that was a... Big complaining point. And because I collect figures, the worst fucking thing is when they don't stand up on their own. So the Red Roses actors, they basically make the feet like almost twice as wide as they are normally. So it stands up. I'm being really careful with my figure because this one's actually not what you guys will get. This one's 3D printed because I made them send me a physical sample because I wanted to like really properly quality check it. So uh, they sent me a 3D printed one. It's really fragile. Yours will not be. And also the colors on yours are going to be better um, than what I got. So mine's uh, real fragile, but uh, yours will not be. Yours is going to be like the rest of them, which are real hardy. I have a bunch of them. Actually, I'm going to set up my shelf. They keep sending me all the figures. And I was like, hey, if you want me to put display that in my fucking thing, you better give me that bag. And uh, <laughs> um, uh, hopefully this will go well. And um, But yeah, man. It's honestly the one of the, it's. I think it's one of the coolest things I've ever made. Is uh, merch wise, obviously, <clears throat> I'm not talking like videos and stand up, but merch wise, man. Uh, I mean, that's every fucking figure collector's dream to have a figure of themselves. So cool, so so cool. And also a really cool thing: when shows do come back, if you bring your box to the show, I'll sign it. Uh, Oh, yeah, the box design, um, oh, I'm not going to harp on too much about it on this podcast, but I'm going to get into the box design. I might do like an Instagram live stream or something um, about it because they fucking nailed the box and I was really, really specific about the box. There was, there was one thing that I kept, I pushed so hard because they have lots of American customers that are collectors. So there are people out there apparently that will just buy it and they have no idea who the fuck I am. And judging by like the response on their socials, that is true. All these people going, I don't know who he is, but the figure is so cool. I'm getting it. So guys, 
Uh, obviously, I would prefer you to get it, but you're competing with crazy collector people. So set your fucking alarms if you want one. I imagine because I think I'm one of the smaller creators, uh, they're doing a pretty limited run for me. So fucking get on that shit. They're going to be 30 bucks free shipping worldwide uh, is what I've been told. Um, uh, what was they saying? Oh, yeah, I pushed so hard to have them put cunt on the box somewhere. They just wouldn't do it. I managed to get it on there censored in a funny way um, that I'm really happy about, but they just, they just, they're like, we're really sorry. We understand it's your audience, but we cannot put cunt on our box. It won't happen. We're trying to do partnerships with Netflix and mainstream things and children's shows. We cannot have a box that says cunt on it. <laughs> so whatever, fair enough. You know what? If you buy it and you bring it to the show, not only will I sign it, I will also write cunt where it was, was supposed, supposed to go. I'll write over the censor um, on the box. So yeah, I'm I'm so stoked with that, and thank you very much to you know this year has been as as bad as this year has been online. It's been fucking milestone after milestone. We're gonna hit half a million very soon, um, and that's because you guys are supporting what I do. Now, if you give me one second, I just gotta ah oh, fuck it, I'm gonna get my charger. You guys, you know what? You guys are useless. I gotta get my fucking charger. One sec. Um, all right, and then. Um, and uh, I don't have time to do this, but I have, I'm about to go on like a fucking, I'm not doing it on this episode because my neck hurts too much, but, uh, because we, we all need to die by 28, but I'm going to go on a fucking like a uh, hall of fame Spears rant about Australia post next episode. They're going to fucking cop it. Dude, I'm fucking, I have the body of an, of a 90 year old man. This is fucked. Um, Anyway, what am I saying? All right, guys, it is, let me just check my notes here. Is it time for miscellaneous bit at the end? I think that it might be. Oh, dude, looking at my notes and just saying shit that pisses me off that I want to yell about, but I can't because my neck hurts because I have the body of a 90-year-old because we should all die by 28. Not be killed, not kill yourself, just we should live in an environment that is so fucking dangerous that it just naturally, like some people will make it to maybe 50 and people will look at them and go, wow, what's wrong with that guy? And their parents will go, that's a 50 year old man. And children will go, what? You can make it to 50? I'm 10. I'm in my fucking, I'm middle aged. And, and mums will go back in the day when the world was really safe. Some people used to live to 103 and for some reason, they were all Japanese women and, and, and kids will go, living to 100? That sounds terrible. You probably have a sore neck. We go, well, Timmy, that's why we took away HR and all safety standards and we started doing the Black Plague again. That's why your sister's in a wheelchair. She has polio. <laughs> Ow. Oh, fuck. I literally got instant karma for telling that horrific joke. Ow. Ow. Oh, my God. This sucks. Only I could do, I haven't, I haven't even lifted anything. Maybe, you know what? That's probably actually the problem. Sitting in a fucking chair and being tall and not leaving the house is going to do me in. Ow, that's fucked. All right, guys, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end before uh, my head falls off. My head is going to fucking fall off. If you would like to send an email to the podcast, it is the email is podcast at Um and that's the way to do it. Um, all right. So first email, life advice, funny stories, pranks, times you've been in trouble, all, all that kind of shit. You guys know what I like, all right? Summarize it in the subject line and give me a fake name if you want to be anonymous because I, Ron Burgundy, all of these, okay? Okay. All right, subject line. Boyfriend wants to try sex with skinny girl. Oh, no. Hey, Lewis, I have a story you might like. <laughs> well, at least I'm going to get something out of this. I recently found out that my best friend's boyfriend... Oh, so it's not you. Okay, well, this is fun for the whole family then. My, I recently found out that my best friend's boyfriend wanted to try sex with a skinnier girl because he wants to see if it's different from having sex with a thick girl. That is... Such classic male manipulation, baby. I don't want to cheat on you. It's an experiment. <laughs> Ow. 
Uh, it's it's not it's not cheating. It's science. Khaled used to have a fucking great stand up joke about that. Girls saying they wanted to. They're going through their experimentation phase. I'm not a slut. I'm a scientist. Um, this is such classic manipulation of someone who probably has low self-esteem. Guys are evil when they're 19. She was down for it at first and the other girl, and oh, she was down for it and the other night she had a girl over that, that, that they both decided on and she watched them give each other hand jobs and shit like that. Give each other hand jobs. Girl, skinny girl with a dick. Fuck, was it me in a wig, bro? Are you sure? My neck would have hurted too much. Um, she watched some hand jobs and things like that. The next day, she's messaged me having a cry saying she made a big mistake and apparently he is disgusted in himself and doesn't want to be around her. I think he just doesn't like fat chicks. Fast forward another day and they're planning a threesome with the same girl. What's going on? P.S. The chick that they've decided to introduce into the relationship is his best friend's ex and his best friend is apparently still hooked on him. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so what's happened here is the guy in that situation is a terrible manipulative person and he's with a girl with really low self-esteem and he's fucking over his best friend, his girlfriend and this girl who probably just likes her, him. Uh, and that's that's fuck, guys. Look, there's nothing wrong with threesomes. There is something wrong with wanting to cheat on your partner and being too much of a fucking pussy to break up with them. Uh, and that's the Spears tip of the day. If you want to have a threesome, you got to do that shit right. Now, am I speaking from experience? No, uh, unfortunately. But you know, that's that's what it is. You got to do that shit properly. Um. All right. Here we go. Revenge for shit flatmates. I love this. I love revenge tales, especially if you've gone too far and you thought, fuck, I should not have done that. This podcast keeps going from uh, like a uh, really fatalist and saying that everyone needs to die to like kind of a really relaxed, like this, this podcast now is kind of uh, Dr. Phil if he was on PCP and weed. If he was coming down from PCP, so he's still saying crazy shit, but it's in a really relaxed tone and his neck hurts and he doesn't know why. Hey, Lewis, uh, I loved, uh, I want, ooh, spoilers, I love this part uh, of from Death Threats Don't Scare Me. Uh, that is a fucking great bit, isn't it? Loosebeers.com slash watch. I'm Lucas and I have some issues with my flatmates that need to be set right ASAP since I'm moving out next month. One of my flatmates... I have three of them, keeps using my hair wax. Oh, that is a death penalty. He leaves marks in the wax and doesn't close the lid properly. That fucking, that would make me so fucking angry. That would, because I, I, hair wax is expensive, bro. I use that shit every day. That would make me so mad. Um, I have... I have two issues with that. Firstly, it's my shit and you have to ask me for it first. I wouldn't even say no if you would have asked. Really? I would say no, you peasant. Get your own fucking wax. Uh, and secondly, while in a pandemic, you don't just finger around in stuff that's not yours. Oh, yeah, of course. Especially regarding hygienic products or girls. <laughs> so naturally, I'm thinking about coming in my hair wax. Okay, now this is insane. Okay, now that is that's like that went from zero to one hundred, and that's what we need because we live too long. All right, someone puts their finger in your hair wax, bam, you come in there, you come in it. Um, naturally, I'm thinking about coming in my hair wax, somehow stirring it a bit and leaving it for him to use. And when I move out, I would put on put a note on the wax saying that he was rubbing my cum in his hair for a month. Another thing I definitely need to get revenge for is my towel. Yeah, look, I think that's a bad idea because you're just going to go to prison. That's like bioterrorism, especially with this pandemic shit. You do anything with like fluids, you're going to jail, bro. Don't do that shit. If you do that, you're an idiot. Uh, and you should be executed at exactly 28. Uh, another thing I definitely need to get revenge for is my towel. Today, I found it behind the washing machine. And when I picked it up, I noticed something sticky in the middle. I lifted it by the corner. It looks like it's been snotted on. It looks like it's been snotted out of the deepest bowels known to man. I don't understand what that means. I'm not sure which one of my flatmates did it and how I should repay them. But by the looks of it, it could have been a team effort. I don't know what that means. 
One last thing. Our already very small freezer is always filled up with... I should have proofread this. Three kilos of crushed ice. Once I threw it all out because it never gets used, but the other day I found four kilos of crushed ice and the day after that we were again at three kilos. Since that day it didn't change. So naturally I'm thinking about it, drinking a fuck ton of water and pissing in it. Dude, I think... Um, I think you might just be a bad person. By the way, I'm not leaving the flat, but also the country. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, do what it... This, this is like... This shit, if you didn't do this, it's like Hitler V2. Um, like, this is what Hitler should have been doing, you know? Instead of painting, he should have been pissing in the fridge, making piss blocks. Um, look, if you really want to get... If you really want to um, get at them... Ah, old flatmates. Hmm... Look, the cum thing's a bad idea because that's, let's be real, it's kind of just sexual assault and also pandemic. What I would think of doing is instead, can you mix some kind of hair color? That's a good one. Into the, into the, the pomade, the hair product, you know? Can you mix a different hair product in there? Oh, like, uh, what's that shit? Nair. What's that shit chicks rub on their pussy to get rid of the hair? Is it Nair, that hair loss stuff? What it, whatever the fuck gets rid of hair, put it in the, the shit. That guy will use your stuff and go bald. Bam. And the hair is gone. That's a good one. Um, regarding the fridge, I don't think you should piss in it because, again, that's just bioterrorism. Instead, what you should do is you should freeze some kind of liquid that is not poison, but it would also be very confusing to put in your drink or to use something that would change the, like, like just like a fuckload of lemonade. <laughs> like imagine just filling the freezer with fucking lemonade and, and for, and forever that freezer will just even, even when, yeah, that's, that's what you do. Lemonade. Fuck piss, bro. That's unoriginal. You want something that's like clear and has a distinct flavor. It's gotta be lemonade. For sure. You just fill the fucking freezer up with lemonade and then forever, even when they've gone through all of the lemonade ice blocks, forever, their, their frozen ice will taste somewhat of lemon. Absolutely. That's what you do, bro. Um, guys, oh, I'm going to end it there because my neck hurting. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, July 31st, my U2's figure drops. And if you want a hoodie from loosespears.com, those are selling out real fast. There's like 30 left. Some sizes are gone already. Um, the shipping price worldwide, by the way, is way, way, way cheaper. Since I changed my site and revamped everything that we're doing, the, the shipping is much, much cheaper. So if uh, you're an international person, I've noticed the international orders have been going crazy, uh, obviously because the shipping price previously was way too high but uh you know revamping everything that's what quarantine's for using it as a as an opportunity to to uh do all my business properly and do as much content for you guys as well um also the luke and lewis show is going back to being done on zoom which is kind of a bummer but also kind of cool you know these are the zoom fucking chronicles all right uh, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Hopefully my neck will be better by then. I've got physio on Monday. I will talk to you then. I hope you guys have a shit one. And also, buy my fucking U2s. July 31st. It's your only chance. See ya.